Welcome back to the final video in the uh, Walnut Tea Cabinet Series. So in the last video, we went and made these uh, two piston fit drawers. They've got half blind dovetails on the front and then full through dovetails on the back. And they fit in absolutely lovely. So they look really good. I'm really glad they're in there. The last thing we need to do with those is finish them, but we're gonna do that in one final finishing stage of the whole cabinet here. So the last thing we actually need to build for this cabinet is the tray that's gonna go in the middle area here. And the tray is just there to hold like a teapot or teacup, something like that, or to, you can use it as a serving tray. And so I've already got the pieces cut out. Uh, we're all prepped and ready to go. I cut them out at the same time as cutting out the stuff for the drawers. So all I need to do, I've got my three pieces to glue up my bottom panel for the tray. We're gonna do the bottom panel the same way we did the top shelf here, where we're gonna do a glue up of three pieces first, then we're gonna cut that in half, glue it again, and then get our full width panel. And then for the outside of the tray, I've got two of our edge drain pieces that are, have really nice straight grains through them. And we're just going to be cutting nice simple miters on them and then putting in some walnut splines to make it add, to add a little bit of extra strength. So when you're cutting the pieces for the tray, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. First off, you want to try and figure out what your height is going to be before you get your tray together. Uh, we started with about two inch thick stock, so I cut these down to one and five eighths, I believe. Something like that. A little bit narrower than I normally would do a tray. I normally go with, you know, one and three quarters, uh, one and thirteen sixteenths. That or height is typically what I do for a tray, but because this is inside of a thing and it's not meant to be carrying a lot of stuff, uh, it doesn't need to be super tall. Um, same thing, I went down to about half an inch on these just to keep them a little bit lighter and a little bit thinner so they take up less space. Uh, so that works out really well for fitting it inside of this thing. Again, if you're making like a big serving tray, you're gonna wanna stick with that you know, normal 5 eighths thickness or even 3 quarters depending on the size. But for this application, half an inch is perfect. And so when you're cutting the pieces, you wanna make sure that you're doing them about a 16th oversize. In here right now, I've got my side pieces and you can see very clearly that they do just stick over the shelf by just about a 16th of an inch. And so you can see for the front and back piece, I can't quite fit it in the cabinet all the way. It gets stuck on the outsides. Again, this is perfect. We're about a 16th of an inch oversized. And what this will allow me to do, because I'm gonna be adding keys to these miters, I wanna make sure that I have room to hand plane them down smooth. And then once those are nicely dried up and everything's together, I can then hand plane the tray to fit perfectly. That way it'll make up for any, you know, any imperfections I have in the case. If I try to make all of my all of my miters so that they're the exact perfect dimensions for the case, they might not glue up together square because one might, you know, one piece, the back piece might need to be, you know, a 16th of an inch shorter than the front piece. But when you're dealing with miters, if you're dealing with anything but a perfect square, they're not gonna glue up nicely. So the idea here is to cut all of our pieces to the exact same size, about a 16th oversize from what I know I need. That way I can glue up a perfect square and plane it down to whatever oddities the case has for me.
Okay, so while the train is drying, we're gonna start working on finishing this thing. All we need to do, really do here is just really put a coat of oil on the outside and just kind of finish cleaning up some of our edges. So our protruding dovetails are all still quite sharp and jagged. So you slide your hand across, it kind of hurts because they're kind of sharp. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to just need to go in and just slightly chamfer all the edges here. And so to do that, I'm gonna be using my half inch Veritas chisel. Uh, it's very sharp and perfect for this kind of thing because it'll slice right through the end grain that we're gonna be cutting through here uh, without really causing a lot of tear out. And so all we need to do is really just put a chamfer on all the exposed edges. Uh, it's a really simple thing to do, and it will make your work look a lot better uh, when you're working with protruding dovetails like this. And so we're going to be doing this on all sides. So the pins that are sticking out on the side panels here, we're going to add a slight chamfer. And then on the tails that are sticking out on the top, we're again going to add that nice slight chamfer to it. Okay, so our tray is ready to have the splines or keys cut into it He's right now. And you can see here, this is my miter spline jig. Uh, this is absolutely horrible. So before you guys go down to the comments, I'll just let you know that this is not something that I normally would want to use. Uh, when I got my new table saw, I had to throw my old jig because it didn't fit or work on this new table saw, just because of the way it was designed. Uh, and uh, so yeah, that is, that is why I have this current one. Uh, it's very temporary. I literally threw it together for a project I had to do, a tray I had to make last weekend. Uh, and then I'm going to use it for this tray. And then probably by the next time you guys see me ever cut keys into miters, uh, I will probably have a new one that is actually much nicer and much better. I have pretty good plans and all the materials to build a new really nice one. I just haven't had time to do it yet. So that's why I have this absolute disaster of a uh, spline jig. And so anyway, the, the basic idea here, and you can make these things super quick and easy, is you basically just need two diagonal pieces that are perfectly cut out of 45. So this is a perfect 90 degrees between these two, and then that 90 degree needs to be in line with the blade. So I don't know how perfect this is. Again, as you can tell, it's very, you know, it's a very, very simple jig. So I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, getting things super accurate because again, you're adding the keys they are one eighth thick piece of material. They're not really a noticeable thing uh, if they're not perfectly straight. They're also not super long or deep, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, and so these pieces that I have just Brad nailed on here are a quarter inch away from the blade, which is again what I do for all the trays and that that I make, uh, which is what I'm gonna be putting on this tray. It's just a quarter inch in from each edge uh, and a one eighth thick piece of material. And so we're going to be putting two keys on each corner. I just think that that looks really good. It just balances it and it adds a really good amount of strength. Again, because our material isn't super thick here and we can't put really big keys in these miters, uh, they're not, each key is not really adding that much strength. So by adding two of them, we know that we're going to have plenty of strength to support this and it's not going to fall apart if we have like a teapot in there.
And just like that, the cabinet is now completed. So we've got oil and finish over all areas of this thing. Everything has dried now and it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, I was gonna do a part where I hung this up on a wall, but I don't currently have a wall in my house where I can actually put this thing. But it looks just as good sitting on a desk as it looks sitting hanging on a wall. So eventually I will get up on the wall and I'll probably post pictures out on my Instagram, but for now it is just going to sit on a counter in my house and sit there for a while. But anyway, so we have a very good functional tea cabinet now. So like I mentioned at the very beginning of this project, uh, we've got, a, there's a few different key aspects about this thing that make it extremely useful. First off is this top section up here is designed, it's five inches deep or five inches tall, uh, and it's designed around fitting, you know, your kind of your standard tea canister things. Uh, for most of the ones that, you know, my mom, my sister, I have, they're all about five inches tall and so they fit up there perfectly. Also a lot of, you know, your typical mugs in that, your typical like tea mugs, tea cups and that are usually under five inches. So you can also store them up there. There's plenty of weight rating for that shelf to support all that. Then I'll go down to our middle section. We can fit a teapot in this section and pull out our tray and serve some tea. It's again, this is one of my favorite features uh, and it was a complete accident. Honestly, I never really thought to do this until I wanted to work around having this big hole in the middle of the shelf here. Uh, and I wanted a, a good way to cover it up that also kind of made sense. And this to me just made sense. So you can put your teapot on here, depending on the size of your teapot, you can put a couple different cups or you know a sugar pot, something like that. And it's just a really nice way to work with it. And you're much less likely to drop the teapot when you're pulling it out of the cabinet because you've got this nice sturdy tray. And then for both our drawers, I mentioned this in the drawer video, I didn't actually end up putting any kind of dividers in them because I don't use, I don't personally use that many small tea bags. A lot of the tea that I make, I actually put it in a little like a little strainer thinger. Uh, and so it's just loose leaf tea in a bag. And so these will be nice and deep enough to stack many of those bags on top of each other and fill it up quite nicely. So again, uh, depending on what I want to put in here, there's plenty of weight rating to the bottom of the drawers because we've got those nice thick bases and they fit in with that beautiful piston fit finish. And so everything just looks so very good with that coat of oil on it. One thing I really like about Walnut is any of your marking knife lines really just take on a little bit of a deeper, deeper dark brown color compared to the rest of the wood. And so areas like our half blind dovetails on the side of the drawers or our dovetails on the top of the case here, where we have a scribe line or a marking gauge line that still shows through, you know, we didn't plane through it all the way we get this nice dark line that really highlights and accentuates the dovetails, which some people like it, some people don't. I personally absolutely love it because again, it shows that these were hand cut. You can't, you don't, you don't generally put those lines on there if you're using a machine, you know, table saw, bandsaw to cut out dovetails. You only really put those lines on there when you're hand cutting them. So again, it's just one of those key signs and something people can look for to really show that this is a handmade piece of, uh, well, not really furniture, but I don't know, a display I we can go with that. So overall, I'm really thrilled with how this came out. And honestly, one of my favorite things about this is the Horton Brasses uh, knobs that we put on there. Because these are actual brass knobs and they're in such a beautiful dark antique finish, I really love the look of them. I haven't been able to find good small hardware before. And so when I did find out about Horton Brasses, they're the stuff is just awesome, I love it. Again, this is not sponsored. And so looking back at this cabinet, there was a few different things that as I was building it, I realized I should have done differently. First off, when I was doing the finishing, I should have finished absolutely everything before doing the glue ups. And when I say that, I mean finishing like the whole outside of the case, you know, all the dovetails, all the back, every, every piece before I actually do the glue ups. Same with the drawers, I should have done the finishing on them before I actually glued them up. And so what I found is what worked really well on the inside of the cabinet by pre-finishing it, I didn't get any glue sticking to the kind of these top inside corners and same with the bottom corners. And whatever glue squeeze out there was easily popped off with a chisel. Whereas when I had the glue squeeze out on the top around the protruding dovetails, it took a lot of effort and actually led to some scratches and more things to fix when I tried to cut it off with the chisels around any of these protruding parts. Along with the protruding dovetails, I also should have chamfered them beforehand. Uh, again, uh, adding in the chamfer with the chisel is just a little bit less accurate than I personally would like. Uh, I managed to get them all nicely evened out and I think that they look really good the way they are. 
But again, if I'd done it beforehand, before it actually glued up the whole cabinet, uh, I could have just run along here with my block plane and it would have been much easier to do and would have given me, given me a much more accurate uh, and clean looking bevel compared to what I have now. But again, right now it looks very hand carved, which is also kind of a cool look that I really like. And so other than those two things, nothing really unexpected happened with this project. Overall, it came together beautifully. Everything went well, everything worked out well. Uh, we, again, we did have a couple mix-ups here and there that led to stuff not working out as well. Like we've got on the uh, bottom drawer here, we've got just a little bump in the bottom where it's not perfectly flush, but you don't really notice that at all. It slides in and out perfectly. There's no issues there. Uh, and our grain is not perfectly matched on one of these panels. Uh, because I ended up cutting the dados in the wrong spot, I had to flip it all the way up or upside down and uh, make it work this way. And again, I don't think it really affects anything. It's something if you're studying this piece, uh, the grain goes down on this side. You can, you, know, you can see the arrows pointing down. Whereas on this side of the case, the air, they all kind of go up much cleaner. But again, it's not something that I'm too concerned about because overall it just looks really good. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing visually wrong with the way this came out. So that's, that's going to do it for this project. I really, I really enjoyed doing it. This was about a two week project. Uh, surprisingly enough, small stuff like this actually takes me a lot longer because there's so many small intricate details compared to like a piece of furniture where you can just kind of crank out the stretchers, crank out the overall form of the piece of furniture. Stuff like this where you have a lot of different drying times, you have to build certain things. Everything is kind of dependent on a previous measurement. So like our drawers and our tray are, are dependent on the previous measurement of having the actual cabinet fully glued up. It does take a long time to do it. And I think that's a big part of the artistry and the craftsmanship that goes into making something like this is just all that attention, the detail that has to go into it to actually make it come out successfully. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this project. I've already gotten started on the next little video series that I'm gonna be putting out here. Uh, and I can tell you guys, it's gonna be a pretty cool project. It's much bigger than I expected. So you can look forward to that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this project and I will see you in the next one.